to Driving to the Hoops Basketball Diaries. This is Clint. Uh, please don't forget to like my video and subscribe. I want to get that up front. So anyway, today I was going to talk about uh, great ABA stars. If you're not too familiar with the ABA, it was, uh, <clears throat> it was a league that lasted nine seasons. It ended in 1976. Um, it produced some of the best what would later be NBA talent ever. Um, some game-changing type players. And um, also another thing it brought was the three-point shot. Kind of had a street ball feel to it. Um, they were legit pros. This wasn't like some B League or G League or C League or whatever. Like these were these were NBA caliber players. Like they when the draft would come around, it would be the ABA and the NBA. It's it was kind of hard to imagine having two legit pro leagues of any major sport, <clears throat> but in basketball, they had it for nine years. Um, and some of, some of the best players ever did come out of there for sure. Um, and I was just going to kind of go over some guys like um, some of the players are, it's really hard to find a lot of like highlights and things like that. And if you're under, 60 years old you probably never saw really any of them play um, at least in the ABA with the red white and blue ball um, but the first a couple of names that come to mind that the first big star you know and, and he had like some legal issues early in his uh, college and pro career uh, he played um, I think he played, I don't remember where he played college, I won't get into that, but he played for the Harlem Globetrotters and then kind of some other secondary NBA or pro leagues. And then when the ABA come around, Connie Hawkins uh, showed up and he was um, a really different kind of guy. Like he was like Julius Irving light, like he was pre-Dr. J. He could glide, he had the big hands. Uh, didn't have a huge vertical, but he could glide. Like, he really could hang in the air. Um, and he, he did some amazing moves around the basket. Um, he, play, he had a good NBA career later. He ended up going to the NBA. Um, but he had had some legal issues. Um, it was like maybe point shaving or something like that in college. Um, and then, so the NBA banned him. But eventually they let him, let him in. And, but he did start out in the ABA. Uh, for the Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh Pipers. They actually won the ABA championship, which was technically at that time considered equivalent to an NBA championship. So it's pretty impressive. Um, a couple other guys like, um, let's see, Roger Brown, he was a big player. Bob, uh, Bill Cosby, I know we don't have a lot of good things to say about Bill Cosby, but uh, Bill Cosby saw him play and saw him do some moves and said he was the best guard he'd ever seen up into that point and we're talking comparing him to Oscar Robertson and Jerry West and players like that um, uh, he would I think he, I don't know a whole lot about him because there's just not a lot of information on him but he was a great player um, so there there was another guy um, and I'm gonna have trouble I'm getting his name confused right now with the great arm wrestler John Brzezine. But his, his name was something John, and I, I'll get it. I'll post it right here in the line. But it was John Brzezernik or something like that. Uh, very interesting player. Had one of the highest um, points per game averages in pro basketball uh, back then. And he was just a lethal scorer kind of a different kind of dude right so he he did play in the nba his last year or two maybe three i think he played for seattle i want to say in the mid 70s uh, but he was lethal in the aba and there was some interesting story where he had went to africa i want to say the congo but i'm not sure it was a country in africa and he essentially went missing and they never found him um, and I'll post his name and maybe like a little article on that. It's kind of interesting because he was such a great player and then he just disappeared off the face of the earth, literally. Um, so a, and a couple of NBA players actually jumped to the ABA. So you had Rick Barry, Billy Cunningham, to, to name a few. Um, and they were, they were outstanding when they played in the ABA. Um, 
you know, both, you know, good all-round small forwards, basically, that were kind of wing players and come into the ABA. I think that style probably fit both of those guys' style pretty well, but I feel like Billy Cunningham, he was such a great athlete that it really helped his career, um, and he probably thrived a little more in that run-and-gun style of the ABA. Then again, Rick Berry with the three-point line, great shooter. I mean, he, he was a pretty good three-point shooter at that time, even though most people weren't shooting it. Um, and there was a couple of other players that kind of jumped back and forth. Uh, some some great players uh, with that had great NBA careers. Obviously, the best ever from the ABA was Julius Irving, uh, Dr. J. Uh, he was just a killer in the ABA. He was so good. If, if he'd have played his NBA, his first six five, six years of pro basketball in the NBA, he would probably be up there on Mount Rushmore of basketball players. He was so good when he was young. Um, just changed the game. I did a whole video on him. I'll post it in here too. Um, so uh, George Gervin, another player who actually was better later in the NBA, had more bigger scoring numbers in the NBA than he did the ABA, which you would think it'd be the other way around, but it wasn't. Um, Dan Issel, guy that he was a 20 and 12 kind of player, good mid-range shooter, post player, power forward, maybe center sometimes. Um, played with the Nuggets in the NBA and had a great NBA career too. Uh, Hall of Famer, artist Gilmore. Uh, he come out of the ABA, had a great NBA career. I think he still has a record for the highest field goal percentage and career field goal percentage. Um, ever um, the and you know if you were to take a survey of, of people you know if you were to ask basketball fans who is the all-time leading ABA score nine, 99 out of 100 people would probably say Julius Irving or maybe George Gervin or you know they'd name some kind of big name player but actually the all-time leading ABA score was a little 5'11 uh, guard, point guard named Louis Dampier, and he shot a lot of three pointers. And he played most of his career in the ABA. As a matter of fact, he may have played all nine seasons. I'm not sure of that. He may have come in a year or two later, but he played a long time in the ABA. Was a good scorer, great three point shooter. He was the first, like, like he would have thrived today because he was the first player that was shooting like four or five hundred three-pointers in a season. Um, and this was back in the ABA time. So um, I think Rick, I want to say Rick Mount, he was a great shooter. I think he played for the ABA. Um, a great player that most people don't realize come out of the ABA. Three-time MVP, uh, scoring leader, uh, once or twice, maybe three times actually, was Moses Malone. He come out of high school, one of the first players to do that, um, and he played in the ABA. His, uh, uh, his pedigree is with the ABA, and he was a good one. Um, uh, let's see, who oh, <clears throat> David Thompson, a guy that doesn't get enough recognition. Skywalker was his nickname. The nickname says it all. He was kind of Jordan's idol growing up. He was a North Carolina guy uh, with a lot of lift. 44-inch uh, vertical. Back then was huge and it's still big today. I don't know anyone personally that can jump 44 inches off the ground, but uh, definitely one of the great leapers of all time. Didn't have huge hands like Dr. J. He didn't have the glide that Dr. J had. Hang time. Uh, but he could get up. He could jump higher than Dr. J, that's for sure. Um, one of the great shooting guards. And he's one of those. He had a great a ABA career. Had a great college career, by the way. But his NBA career was probably just as good as his ABA. Um, and he really changed the game a lot. Just a great player. Um, there were some other players like Mel Daniels. I think he played for the Pacers. Um, Gosh, Spencer, I want to say Spencer Haywood played in the ABA, kind of come out of there, um, but I could be wrong on that. Um, George, mm, 
I'm blank on his name, and I'll post it here. One of Philadelphia's uh, power forwards on that 77 team that, oh, George McGinnis. George McGinnis played on the 77 Sixers, and uh, he was one of those guys that um, had a great early career, kind of trailed off later, but he was a good one. Um, so, I mean, as you can tell, there was a lot of really good players that come out of the ABA. Um, if you look at all the names I've named, plus there were some players that were just ABA players that were outstanding athletes. A lot of them maybe got into some legal stuff or just got injured. Unfortunately, in the 70s, that was a big um, time for drug usage and experimentation, you know, late 60s, early 70s. And they kind of had a free-flowing style for the ABA. So, you know, that may have ruined a couple of careers as well. Um, so, anyway, just some thoughts. I wanted to talk about the ABA today. I know I'm forgetting so many players. Uh, but I'd like to get your thoughts on this, obviously. Uh, and tell me what you know about the ABA. Tell me... Um, you know, some players that maybe I didn't name that you think are some of the best. And if they had been to the NBA, how they would have changed the league. Uh, I'd love to hear some thoughts. Uh, anyway, don't forget to like. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And uh, that way you don't miss any videos. And we'll see you all soon. Have a good weekend.